Welcome to Nurse Practitioners Changing Practice. I am Dr. Carol Berger. Hi, I'm Dr. Nina Zimmerman. Welcome. Um, so, so glad that you could join us again today. We, we wanted, we talked with you the last week about, uh, you know, just getting started in NP school that first year, um, and you're taking courses that first year that are more um, about what it's like to transition to be an NP. You're learning about licenses and, uh, you know, uh, the legalities of it and that kind of thing, some theory, um, some health promotion, but then you're starting to get into the core courses yeah that the np needs. core courses yeah and uh nina you really know a lot about the three p's so tell us because sure. you were the director of the np program for a while so tell us what you know as you were um doing that decade-long stint <laughs> sure sure i'd be happy to what, what what is the kind then you were also lead of health assessment which is yes. one the three p's. is one of the p's so um so yeah, so when you look at the curriculum, which I think is important to, to just kind of get familiar with, doesn't matter what program you're at, you're going to have what they call the MSN core. These are the, stu these are the students that are just doing your MSN or um, MSN to DMP. You're going to have theory, like uh, nursing theory, like uh, Dr. Berger said, you're gonna have nursing research, you're gonna have health policy, leadership in practice, some kind of leadership course. You may have a um, uh, um, health inform you know, informatics course, um, depending on your curriculum, health uh, promotion disease prevention, which Dr. Berger is, uh, uh, teaches very well. Um, those are all, um, you know, what they call the, the more basic and we call them the MSN core courses. And there's more writing, there's more discussion. Um, um, you might have, it depends on the, the program that you go to, you won't have as many tests or quizzes, but you may like health promotion has some quizzes. Um, leadership may have some quizzes about leadership in healthcare, or leadership in nursing. Uh, it just depends on the curriculum. So more papers, most of More the papers and application yeah. and projects. Application, yeah. yeah. You know, group work, things group like work. that. Yeah. That you would be exploring uh, those topics with um, in, in that realm. Yes. But then when you hit about the second year, um, or maybe, you know, um, maybe uh, at least what, at least about four semesters in, yeah. depending on the curriculum, you're going to do what we call the three P's. The three P's is the nurse practitioner core curriculum. It's path advanced pathophysiology, advanced pharmacology, and physical assessment is the, is the P, but sometimes it's called health assessment different things like that. Those are your nurse practitioner core courses. And even though you had patho in undergrad and farm in undergrad and health assessment in undergrad, I always hear students say, I already had this. Well, you're, 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 re, you're reviewing it. Pathophysiology is pathophysiology. Pharmacology is the same me you know, mechanism of action of drugs and things, but there's going to be new drugs and things that you're going to learn about. But it's, um, and health assessment, but it's from the perspective of being a provider. Right. So now you have to understand those concepts in relation to um, differential diagnosis, clinical decision making, patient education. Right. Those things. Uh, pharmacology, you're going to be the prescriber. You're not just administering meds, you're the prescriber. You're gonna really have to understand. Yeah. You learned about the pathway. I always liked it and I wanna create this game. We do have, and I like to keep mentioning this, we do have a website and I'll, I'll tell you more about that later, but it is NP as changingpractice.com and we have lectures on there we have games on there and i always want my husband to create this one game called the cyp4 modulator yes so, i mean and, and just sort of like to show the mechanism of action and how yeah. the body processes drugs well as a prescriber you really have to be careful because yeah. one medication can influence another, another medication or let's say you've got somebody that's taking a thyroid medication and they um eat eat breakfast and drink a glass of milk every morning and they take their thyroid pill mm -hmm. actually they lose almost 70 percent of the medicine 
Right. So you might, you know, just you have to kind of know these things and you learn things as you go around. Uh, that's why it's a, the advanced courses. And it is a lot of information. Or in, in patho, you have to explain the patho um, to your patients in a way they can understand it. And in order to do that, you have to understand it so much more. Because if you've ever thought about trying to take a really complex thing, and breaking it down to the point where a child could understand it, you really have to have a deep understanding of that subject yeah. just to be able to do that. Right. So yeah. that's what we're trying to do in those two subjects. That's right. And then advanced assessment. I hear this a lot. The nurses will say, I already know how to assess. You do. You do know how to assess. But now you're going to learn advanced techniques from a provider standpoint. Your history taking is different as a provider. Your documentation is different as a provider. Your advanced health assessment techniques are different as a provider, right? You have to come up with differentials. You have to come up with differentials based on your history review of systems and the physical exam. So you want, you know, you're going to be doing some other um, health assessment, uh, physical assessment techniques to give you that information. Um, and, and it'll be different if it's a focused exam when somebody comes in with one complaint or you're doing, you know, a wellness exam and you're doing a full physical exam. Those are different, different ways you physically assess, different ways to do a history taking. Um, uh, so it, you learn and you learn how to document a patient um, encounter. Right. And how to just formulate and make sense out of right. everything, you know, uh, you'll learn a little bit about billing and how your documentation influences that. And the, the rules are always changing around that. So, but you learn a lot. It is exciting. But the one thing that I hear, um, what I see with students, especially when I was teaching um, health assessment, is that they would have these deer and headlights look. And I taught um, uh, health assessment online for a long time. Mm -hmm. And as an adjunct uh, professor, what I, I asked myself, what can I add to your course? Because your course was phenomenal. Thank and I said, what can I add to it? And I said, well, all I really can add to it is my clinical pearls. Oh, the clinical pearls are excellent, Dr. Burr. The Burr. clinical pearls Love are those. actually on our website and you can listen to them. And the reason they're on our website, I have been now teaching uh, for five years full time. And even this last semester, and it is the students will find me because they know that I'm the person who presents it on the uh, it's still in an, it's still in the health assessment courses. They will listen and they'll find me and they'll they'll email me and they'll say, Dr. Berger, thank you so much for the clinical pearls. Can I have a PowerPoint or can you tell me how I can access them later? And that's why we put them on the website. Yes. What are the clinical pearls with health assessment? Well, for me, they were the zebras of, of uh, what you might find in clinical practice. Yeah. So you have all these great assessment techniques and you're trying to figure out what is, is all this picture telling you, and then you get a surprise ending. Yes. You know, oh yeah, and 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 it, you have to have these advanced skills um, to be able to, to put it all together. And that's what health assessment does. Yes, absolutely. And once you see certain things, you never forget them, right? No, you always remember, um, you'll always say, ooh, something is just, you know, just this last time I was working in the hospital, I had a patient from before that had um, abnormal amount of pain with abdominal pain that uh -huh. really what you thought, you know, but because I had that experience before, I knew to get another CT of that abdomen with contrast to see what was going on. So you do, you pick up things from practice, you know, when you right. see this and you go, oh, wow, that's what we need to do. But I also begin to start hearing the stress level when they get into these courses, although they do enjoy the material, yes. it goes through the roof. And I'm not sure how to help. I, there's no way to make this stuff easier. It's not, it's not, but I, I, you have to really, I mean, you have to super duper apply yourself in these NP core courses because, and every course is important. But, you know, patho farm and advanced assessment are your, um, the basis for your clinical courses and you becoming a really good um, 
a clinician and provider. I mean, it's just vital. And to understand that what you learn in school, like uh, patho, uh, patho doesn't change as much. Discoveries happen in different pathways and different things and different cycles and, you know, may happen. But like in farm, every year you that need to learn change. about, that changes every year. And the um, guidelines for treatment. And the guidelines, right. Your guidelines for hypertension change, which reflect what, you know, the pharmacology. Well, call a drug. Yes. Yeah. Say, okay, we're not giving Zantac anymore. We're not giving <laughs> Zantac anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. so that, that, has, that does change. Um, uh, but, I, you know, knowing pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics and all of that, um, therapeutics is all important. And then, you know, we uh, try to update uh, the medications. And I try to tell my students the best way for health assessment, if you want to be successful in there is as a nurse, when you're as a nurse, cover up the diagnosis. Yeah. Don't look at it. Look at the chart without looking at the diagnosis and ask yourself, what would I come up with? And then look at the diagnosis. Yes. And say, was I right? Was I on the right track? What was the assessment plan? Was Start the, reading those notes. Yeah, read that. provider notes, you know, read the, prov I mean, it, uh, when I was on the floor and in units, um, we had you know, charts and, and even though it's so much better with EMRs and helps with documentation, billing, it helps with decreasing med errors and all that. It was great to pick up that um, chart and learn how to read really bad writing, but learn <laughs> to read the whole uh, H, the whole history and, and um, physical exam, the HMP of, um, of your patients that the providers would do, that the physicians and the NPs and the PAs would do, because it told us, it told a story. It That's really important. told a story. And then you were like, oh, they're thinking about this, or oh, they're thinking about that. Because um, for me, if something was ordered, a test, a lab, um, whatever, and I'm like, I don't understand why they're ordering this test, the HMP from the provider would tell you what. Right. And that's how I learned at the beginning. Or you can see when they order a test with contrast, when they right. order without. Contrast. Um, and you would begin to see patterns because no matter how much we teach you, even in those 16 weeks courses, there's no way even in three 16 week courses, we're going to teach you everything. So the more you can look up on your own, the more you can go to up to date um, in a lot of hospitals provide up to date free. Um, uh, your colleges may um, provide a resource in the library uh, to, to find up to date. I know ours does. So, you know, you can find that you need to start reading it. When you have a question, you need to look it up and, and think up. further. Um, in Patho, there's the best way I can explain, have people to learn Patho was to try to explain it as if they were explaining it to a child because right. whatever the process is that you have to learn you need to dummy it down enough and if you can get it to the point where they can understand what you're talking about you probably know the information yep. pretty, pretty good in farm you have to apply it you have to say to yourself what medicines would I change? What medicines would I do? You have to invent your own case scenarios. And I will, would pass out a blank um, case, a case study that didn't have anything on it. And I would say, I want you to write the case study and make it up to be somebody who's got diabetes, who uh, you would not prescribe, let's say, uh, metformin to. What, you know, and make the labs, do whatever you want to do and make your own case scenarios. And the more you practice that, the more you're going to understand when you do do something, when you select something, um, because you have to kind of be put in the driver's seat and, and learn how to be the teacher some too. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Ap application, application, application. Um, and it doesn't, you know, there's no magic, there's no magic pill. You know, it's not only reading, but application and everything that's offered in that course, you know, review it. There's readings, read the information. If there's lessons or lectures, watch the lectures. If there's, you know, application or um, some, you know, some uh, faculty ask you to do a study guide or ask you to fill, do it because all of that will help you learn.
-hmm. and everybody learns, you know, a little differently, a little bit differently. It's not necessarily one way to learn. You know, you're not necessarily all an auditory learner, an application learner, but the more the variety of how you um, review and learn material, the better off you will be. But take advantage of everything that's in that course. Everything, Any, you get, if you still don't understand it, there are lots of YouTube videos, and I yeah. hear that sometimes is a negative way. But I myself no. have gone to YouTube videos when I right. can't get a concept down well enough, and right. I found some kind of a some somebody or some way that it's explained or visualized to me yes. that makes total and perfect sense. So it makes total and perfect sense, absolutely. And then absolutely. I'm like, well, great. So then when I read the book. And I go back to the book, I've got that vision. I'm, yeah. I'm a visual learner too. So I yeah. learn from the vision and then I go back and read the book because then it makes more sense than reading words that didn't make as much sense to me when I didn't have a picture with it. Right. So everybody has to find their technique, but you don't expect that these, these three courses which take what, about two semesters to complete? Yeah, minimum two semesters, depending on how they're laid out in your in your program. And some have clinical hours because I know our health assessment does have clinical hours mm -hmm. attached to it. So you're working, trying to study, doing clinical hours, and you're going, how can I do this? You knew you were doing this when you, when you started the program, that it was yeah. going to be this kind of stuff. So um, they, just... You know, no, yeah. it is going to be hard. So we go into it knowing that. And the other thing is with the skills, I didn't even talk about skills. So health assessment, the skills that you um, have to either demonstrate or learn about, you can't do it with just watching a video. You have to practice, 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 right? If right. when you go to clinical, whether it's for health assessment or any of your clinical hours, your preceptor is not going to show you how to do the advanced assessment. They, they are already assuming you know how to take a history and that you can do a physical exam. So it's very vitally, vitally important, important that you know these skills, um, not only for the course, but your first clinical, you need to be able to know the basics. Um, um, you know, you just have to, your preceptor is, it, there's great preceptors that, uh, assist you and have you learn things, but most preceptors, many preceptors no, are, no. yeah, are, are going to assume that you can go look at a chart and go into the room and take a history and do an exam. So, so that's a perfect segue, Dr. Zimmerman, into um, our next uh, next week's uh, yes. talk, which is going to be about preceptors and um, that clinical experience. Yes. I encourage you all, please go to our website, NPS changingpractice.com. Um, take a look around and see all the things that we have there that would help you um, as learners. And leave us a message on what you would like to uh, have us post or learn more about. Explore the games um, and uh, the case studies. We have interactive live case studies, yeah. um, which are really fun. So um, take, take a look around and we will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.